Hello, Oscillator Sync here. A few days ago, I posted this jam. So all of the sounds that you're hearing in this jam are coming from these two Volkers, the Volker Kick and the Volker Keys. But rather than using their internal sequences, instead, we're making use of the Digitones MIDI tracks. So as you may know, the Digitone is a really wonderful FM synth, which is paired with a really great sequencer. The Electron sequencers have a very particular way of, of working, and if you get on with it, then you really, really love it. And for my part, I really, really love the Electron way of doing things. But on the Digitone, as well as having a sequencer to sequence the internal FM synth voices, there are also four tracks of sequencer which are dedicated to sequencing external MIDI devices. Each of those tracks has eight note polyphony and has all of the great electron goodness like conditional trigs and p-locks so you can apply the electron workflow to other synths. So in this video I want to walk you through the setup for this jam, uh, how everything is rooted, how you set up uh, the Volkers to work with the Digitone, how you set up the Digitone to work with the Volkers. And although we're going to be talking about the Volkers, actually about 90% of everything that we talk about uh, in this video is going to apply to whatever you want to sequence with the Digitone. And um, you will want to sequence stuff with the Digitone because it's awesome. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about the, the physical setup here. So we've got the MIDI out coming out of the Digitone. That's going into this uh, MIDI splitter here. So the Digitone comes in here and it splits it out uh, here. And those two cables are going into my Volkers uh, MIDI ins here. My Volkers are being powered by my new My Volts power supply, one power supply to power all of my Volkers all at once. It's really, really neat. They're not sponsoring or anything, but I'll pop a link to the power supply in uh, the description because it's very keenly priced and seems to be working very well indeed. Uh, the output of my kick is going straight into my audio interface. The output of the keys, however, is going into the uh, left and right input of the Digitone, uh, and that allows me to run the keys through the master reverb on the Digitone, and then the output of the Digitone is going into the interface as well. Okay, so just one uh, Volker-specific thing, just quickly. Uh, the Volkers can be set up to receive MIDI in, in one of two different ways. In one mode, all it receives is the clock, so kind of your start-stop messages and the tempo. And that means that if you're in that mode and you try and send a note information to the Volkers, they won't do anything. The other mode accepts clock and note values. So the way that you can check this is if you um, turn off the Volkers and then turn it back on when you're holding down Funk, you go into the global uh, settings, and this is the same on all the Volkers. And uh, the light that you're looking to be lit up is the light on seven. Again, I think this is the same on all of the Volkers, and this is the receive MIDI short message uh, setting. If this is turned on, then it's going to um, get note information. If it's turned off, then all it's going to do is take clock information, and you're gonna get really confused as to why nothing is working. Uh, once you have got the stuff set up properly, uh, make sure you hit the record button and that will save the settings and restart the unit. So the other thing that you'll need to know is what MIDI channel the Volkers are set up to be receiving MIDI on. Um, again, so uh, to do that, turn the Volker off, and this time you want to turn it on when holding down the memory button instead, and the lights across uh, the bottom here tell you what um, channel it's set to receive on. So at the moment, my kick is set up to receive on channel 13. As it happens, my key is is set up to you receive on channel one, I think. Um, again, once you've set the channel that you want, make sure you hit record so that that setting actually gets saved. So one final Volker specific thing, although this might apply to other synths that have built in sequencers, um, make sure you have a completely empty uh, pattern when you start, if you're going to try and sequence it using, well, anything else, a uh, Digitone or, or, or anything else really. And that includes making sure that you have an empty motion sequence as well. So on most of the Volkers, you can program the mo motion sequence. Uh, that will still apply to the sequences and things can get really, really weird. Um, uh, I had a motion sequence on an otherwise empty uh, uh, sequence on the keys and it was confusing the hell out of me as to why the sound was suddenly changing part way through. Uh, and the reason was that I had a motion sequence set up. So make sure that that is also clear. 
Okay, let's uh, move on to talk about the digger tone. So um, the first thing you need to make sure is that you're actually in the MIDI mode. So uh, if this MIDI light isn't lit, then you're not in MIDI mode. If it is, then you are. Uh, and when you're in MIDI mode, you have access to these four MIDI tracks here. So I'm just gonna go to an empty pattern uh, quickly uh, so that we can uh, see what's what sort of from an empty patch. So the first thing uh, you're gonna want to do um, when you've got your MIDI track uh, set up, so I'll just go to track one here. If you head into the um, SYN1 page here, uh, you've got, this is your MIDI source uh, setup. So this gives you access to um, various controls. Um, at the moment, all of those controls are uh, turned off. Now, the main one that I'm interested in uh, is the channel, this first one here. Uh, so to enable any of these settings, you need to hold funk and punch the uh, the knob basically. So um, once you've done that, you can select what channel this track is going to be applied to. Now, sadly, the channel isn't parameter lockable um, and I kind of wish it was. Uh, so, but if I set up channel one, then I can control the keys easy enough. And if I go to channel uh, 13, which is my kick, that's my kick like that. Stick with the keys to begin with. So once you've set your channel, you're, you're kind of good to go for like uh, basic sequencing. You can either go into step mode and start programming that way, uh, or we can um, go into live recording mode and and we can play stuff in like that. And the nice thing here, um, even with this really simple uh, setup here, you have already got uh, access to uh, things like uh, conditional tricks. So if we go into the trick page here, we can hold down this one here and we can set it to, uh, shall we say, uh, every second bar like that. I'm gonna play this time. Not this time. And so on. So you immediately get access to that kind of electron sequencer way of working. So what's really amazing about the Digitone MIDI tracks is that if your synths that you're controlling respond to MIDI CC messages, as the Volkers do, you can actually set it up to parameter lock the MIDI CC messages, which means that in the case of the keys and the kick, you can control the filters, you control the envelopes, the LFOs, uh, pretty much any of the knobs on the Volkers that you could control via motion sequencing, you can now parameter lock. And that's really, really cool. So in order to set this up, you're going to need to take a look at the MIDI implementation chart. The MIDI implementation chart for your synths, you can usually find either in the manual, if it's a big, thick manual, or often, uh, as is the case for the uh, Volkers, as a separate download. It will list various things that uh, the synth will respond to in terms of uh, its MIDI, whether it will respond to uh, note information and velocity and expression uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it will also hopefully list all of the parameters which are controllable uh, by MIDI CC. So on the MIDI tracks on the Digitone, uh, you can control up to eight different MIDI CC numbers per track. And the way that you set this up is you go into the AMP page here, which is now the, the CC select page as far as uh, the MIDI tracks go. And you can select on each of these eight knobs which CC number you want that knob to control. So if we look at the MIDI implementation chart for the Volker keys, we can see that MIDI CC number 44 can be used to control the filter cutoff. So on our AMP page, if we go to this first knob here and we go to CC 44, we select that. If we then head on to our filter page here, uh, we've got all of those values mapped out. Uh, again, you need to do a uh, funk and punch on the knob that you want to control, but once you've done that, we now have control of that CC number from within the digger tone. And once you've set that up, this knob can now be parameter locked. So if we head into our step sequencer, we can start setting different uh, filter amounts for these different steps. And now, Okay. 
now you can hear that we've got different filter settings for each of those notes, which is pretty cool. And you can carry on setting different uh, parameters up here to be controlled. If we wanted to give each of our notes a different release characteristic, uh, we can go to CC number 50, and then again head into here, hit uh, the funk and the knob, and we can start putting different release characteristics on each of these notes as well. This one can be nice and long, and this one can be sort of moderately short. And And now we've got different release characteristics on these three notes as well. So just one more extra awesome trick that we've got here on the MIDI tracks. Um, if you had the opportunity to dive into the sound design on the Digitone, you will know that the LFOs are something very, very special indeed. And the cool thing here is that we can actually apply it's only one LFO, not two, uh, like on the synth, but we've got one LFO here, which we can apply to the CC values. So here, if we set this to CC value one, which was our filter cutoff, we can now also have an LFO controlling that parameter, which is really, really cool. And you've got all of the same sort of controls that you have in the main synth with different modes, like the hold mode here, or the half and the, all your different uh, waveforms here as well. Brilliant. Okay, so to finish off, let's actually dive into that original jam and see how everything is set up. So uh, in this case, um, tracks one, two and three are all addressing the Volk keys. Uh, so on this first track, if we mute all the other ones, we've got this main kind of riff here. And you can kind of hear that the, the sounds are changing over time. That's because we are applying parameter lock to a couple of different uh, things. I've actually got quite a lot of stuff set up here. I've got various bits of filtering and envelope stuff. Um, all mapped across these knobs here and I'm making use of so that's affecting the filter there if we go into these different steps we should find some locks mostly filter and we've also then got some uh, conditional tricks on some of this stuff as well uh, if we bring the second one actually I'll just mute the first one again You can hear it's got this higher thing here, but we can send both to the synth at once. So the third key track is probably the most interesting of the lot if I just mute the other two. Because it's this one, which has got our sort of snare sound on it, as well as a couple of the nice little plinks. But it's the snare that's particularly interesting because uh, obviously between the keys and the kick we don't have a dedicated way of doing a snare. So the way that I'm achieving this is again by using parameter locks. If we go into the CC setup here, we'll see that we have uh, 46, 47 and 48 set up here as our MIDI CC uh, numbers. And if we look at the MIDI implementation chart on the Volker keys, we'll see that those relate to the LFO, the rate the LFO pitch intensity and the LFO cutoff intensity. And what I'm essentially doing on the uh, hits that would be the snare is I'm cranking those values to kind of get a sort of an FM kind of weirdness going on. Uh, the other trick that I'm having to do there instantly is on these uh, steps that come directly after that is I've put in uh, a parameter but not a note step so that it jumps back down to having uh, none of those things turned up to full and when you bring in the other keys tracks together you get them all kind of interacting together including having that kind of snare happening there as well 
the final track that I've got here is uh, the kick track. Um, and this is kind of made of both of um, sort of kick patterns, uh, but also um, some little sort of plinkety plonkety bits and pieces. So uh, the main, main thing that I'm controlling here is um, the drive control and also the um, decay of the sound. So you can hear some of these hits are quite boomy and long and some of them are much shorter. Some of them are a bit more distorted and heavy and some of them are a bit more mellow. The other thing that I'm doing is that on those more pitched sounds, the higher ones, uh, I'm also turning down the amount of bend on the uh, kick so it sounds less like a kick and a bit more like a little synth sound basically. And then you kind of bring all the stuff together. And you get quite a lot of mileage with just the four notes of polyphony that are between the uh, keys and the kick, three notes on the keys and one on the kick. And you can get quite a lot of stuff going on there by using the parameter locks and layering up the different uh, uh, sequencer elements. One final trick that I have is on the first track here, I've also got the LFO set up to affect the filter so I can So you can get some of that going on as well. Pretty neat. So that's how I set up the jam. I hope that was interesting and informative. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, uh, then please do give it the old thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Um, I'd be really interested to know in the comments if uh, there are any other synths that are in my collection. If you look through uh, my other videos that you'd like to see me have a go a sequencing with the uh, Electron. Um, there are a couple that I think might be really, really fun, uh, but I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts as well. Other than that, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care, guys. Bye-bye.